I'm being dead serious right now. Normally, I would not even record a video at this time to talk about a pro wrestling event. Normally, I'd be in bed. I'll be honest here. I didn't watch TakeOver Chicago Live because I was working. When I got home from work, I was going to watch just the two matches I wanted to see. But then afterwards, I was like, hey, I got home early enough, so let's see if I can squeeze the whole event uh, before I go to bed. And I managed to squeeze in the whole event. And I should be asleep right now. I got work in like less than eight hours, okay, at the time of this recording. It's like 2.13 in California. But holy shit. NXT TakeOver Chicago uh, amounted emotions that I haven't had in quite some time while watching professional wrestling. I was crying. I'm being dead serious. This ain't me bullshitting or trying to be funny. I was crying at the main event. That shit was emotional to me, dog. I haven't got that damn emotional since freaking uh, Shawn Michaels saying I love you to Ric Flair or Shawn Michaels retirement, actually. You know, I was actually getting fucking choked up. You know, you, you know when The Undertaker retired earlier this year, yeah, that was sad. But it was like you knew it was coming, and then the match with Roman Reigns is kind of bleh. It was more of like the story that was told in the main event made me more emotional, especially of what I saw at the end. But god dang, NXT TakeOver Chicago, I'm being dead serious. One of my biggest complaints about NXT and their takeovers is that they just feel like Ring of Honor on steroids. Where, yeah, we get a lot of good matches, we get a lot of good things about the show, and yeah, you can go back and watch a few share of matches every single time, and you'll get a kick out of them, but that's just it. It's just a bunch of good matches, and really that does nothing for the audience. That doesn't make the audience want to continue to watch NXT. It doesn't make the audience want to say, hey, why should I watch this show more often? But Chicago... And I don't think it's up for debate. I know I said this the last time I did a TakeOver review, but I think this one is set in stone. This is going to be the best TakeOver. You can take your TakeOver Dallas and shove it straight up your fucking ass with your Shinsuke Nakamura and Sami Zayn fight forever match. I don't give a fuck. This event right here, this event right here was insane. Because I can tell you something. I wasn't rushing to get my TakeOver Dallas review, but I'm here because I want to talk about a TakeOver Chicago, and, and that's the thing, you guys know I'm genuine about a show, because seriously, when have I ever sounded this enthusiastic about pro wrestling in the last few months? Oh, I always come on camera and I just feel miserable talking about this. First time in a while that I actually want to do a video that I actually want to talk about pro wrestling because golly this show was fucking good this is not me turning independent smart this is just me that enjoys when wrestling gives me something to enjoy I, 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 I'm gonna be honest here I think this is one of the best events that WWE has produced in quite some time I know a lot of people are gonna say there's certain events that they love but to me personally I haven't loved an event more since Money in the Bank 2011. That was the last event that I completely loved. Was Money in the Bank 2011. Uh, TakeOver Chicago. Funny enough in the same arena. <laughs> TakeOver Chicago. You know that. I, I haven't loved an event more. This is a great event. Okay. At least in my personal opinion. You can disagree. You can think I'm overreacting. But I'm being dead serious. Like I said. If you follow my channel for the longest time. When was the last time I've been this enthusiastic about pro wrestling? Anyways, let's get on with the review. I've rambled on for four minutes long enough. Some people may be pissed. Uh, Roderick Strong taking on Eric Young. My only complaint with this match was that it was too damn long. I did not need to see this match go on for 17 minutes. It was ridiculous. Shorten it up. It's fine to be short. You can have a short match. I don't need to see a bunch of false finishes for this opening match. Roderick Strong wins, and you guys know how I feel about Roderick Strong. Fuck that shit. Let's move on forward to the next match. Which I was surprised was the UK Championship. I thought WWE would probably put this a little bit later. Uh, but they put this second billion on the card. And holy shit. This match was bonkers. This match was insane. This match was good. Tyler Bate. This guy's a future main eventer. And I know everyone's going to be like, my is small. Look, I don't care. We have a bunch of vanilla midgets running around the main roster. Uh, I can take a Tyler Bate more seriously than a Finn Balor. 
to be quite frank, I can take a Tyler Bate more seriously than a fucking Sami Zayn. Tyler Bate is good. Throughout the whole match with Pete Dunne, dude was selling his arm, dude was working the... He was, the way the Tyler Bate works is just so above his years. You know, because he's only 20 years old. But the way he works is just so above his years. He's not rushing to his spots. He is not trying to make me go ooh and ah with his moveset. He is just working a match and trying to tell a story. And Pete Dunne's really good. I have nothing but high praise from Pete Dunne. But Pete Dunne is more of like, he's your vintage independent wrestler that everyone likes. He's the guy that does a bunch of moves and doesn't really, like, you know, he sells, but he doesn't sell the facials. Tyler Bate had on-point facials. Like, you know, at first when I watched the first match between these two in the UK Championship Tournament, I was like, why are they giving it to Tyler Bate? Pete Dunne is, like, obviously the better talent. But then after watching this match, I'm just like, damn, dude. Like, I'm glad Pete Dunne won. The right guy went over and Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne, I feel like, being a UK champion is good. But, jeez, man, just the potential I saw from Tyler Bate in this match. Shit. If WWE doesn't do shit with this kid, I don't know what they're doing. And like I said, everyone's going to be like, well, he's too small. Chase. Like I said, we have fucking GQ model Finn Balor going, yeah, ooh, wearing his jobber jacket all around the place. Dolph Ziggler and shit. Okay, I'm pretty sure Tyler Bate is fine. He's passable for today's WWE main event. Will he draw on ratings and money? Shit, if he can wrestle the matches the way he wrestles, probably draw a little bit of interest, man. Because, like, seriously, these two put on such a good match, man. This is, like, it's rare in a wrestling match, and especially because I'm watching this on replay. Normally, if I need to take a piss, I'll hit the pause button, and I'll go take a piss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I actually held it in. Like, it was live. Like, oh, I can't miss this shit. <laughs> like, the stuff that these two were doing were great. The storytelling that they were trying to do was great. Pete Dunne's great. Tyler Bay is awesome. He's going to be a main eventer, hopefully, in the future in the WWE. I like both of these talents. I think they're both really good. But the match was really, really fucking good. Uh, especially if you're more of a pure wrestling fan, you'll like it. But what I liked about this match, too, is, like, you know, the thing is, I always talk about with doing great matches is that you also have to find a way that maybe casual fans can be interested in the match. And I felt the way that Tyler Bray and Pete Dunne work, if I showed this to a casual fan, they would like this match. And that's a big plus. It's kind of like a Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle match from Royal Rumble 2003. And in fact, watching this match, it felt like watching a Chris Benoit-Kurt Angle match, minus the in-ring match stuff in the beginning. Because they didn't really do that much of it. I mean, they did a little bit of it, but not as much as Benoit and Angle. Where it's just like, it told a good story of Tyler Bate being the champion, showing how much he wanted to keep his championship, how much this championship means to him, how much it means to him being the first UK champion taking on this very smart and cunning Pete Dunne. I think they were reading Randy Orton's uh, little Twitter theme that they took that he took a shot on because they didn't really do that much um, hashtag dives in this match. But wonderful match. Excellent match for sure. Definitely a match of the year contender. There's no debating that. You can say it was the best match of the night. It all depends on your personal preference, but this is definitely a wonderful match and definitely a match of the year contender. Um, can't say much praise for both of these guys. Like I said, Tyler Bate. He's really good. I think this is like probably one of the first times ever in wrestling history where like the second match is better than the first. And their first match was pretty good too. Um, the third match of the night was definitely like filler throwaway, but it wasn't bad. Um, Asuke versus Ruby Riot versus, uh, Nikki Cross for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, sad news for Ember Moon. She's out for six months. Get well soon, I guess. I don't know. She didn't really impress me last month, so. Or last takeover event, so. You know, she's alright, Ember Moon. Let's be real here. She's just alright. But, uh, this triple threat match, just like Ember Moon, was just alright. Asuka wins in a sleazy way. This was more of like, hey, we gotta show the fans what Ruby Riot can do. You know, fans kind of understand what Nikki Cross is. But some fans don't even know what Ruby Riot is. And so, you know, this match was a good way to show what Ruby Riot is and get you excited to see what Ruby Riot will do for the future. While also making Asuka more of a sleazy champion. At first she was the champion of dominance. Now she's trying to find ways to cut corners and keep her belt at all costs. And the way she won, I liked it. I had no problem with the way Asuka won. Yeah, it was uneventful, but shit, you gotta try to get heel heat on her somehow. So Asuka winning the way she did was fine. The NXT Championship match was actually the co-main event of the evening. It wasn't the final match. And I praise WWE for doing this, and especially NXT, because they knew 
that if you went on and you put DIY versus the authors of pay at this spot, and especially if what you did at the end of the DIY and authors of pay match, no one would give two flying shits about that NXT title match. And in fact, I like that the WWE put DIY and the Authors of Pain in the main event spot because they earned it. Not deserve. You don't deserve shit in this world. You earn shit. They earned that shit. Their storyline is more important than Hideo Itami getting a one-off title match with Bobby Roode. Because really, to be honest, not always does the NXT title need to main event a show. And especially in a filler throwaway title match like this one. Now, it didn't feel like filler, and that's what I gotta give props to Bobby Roode for. You know, Bobby Roode, really, to be honest, his reign should be a lot worse than it is. Like, I should be totally, like, saying this reign sucks and pooing it. But, Bobby Roode's doing such a good job at making filler, throwaway feuds feel like big deals. For real. Normally, this feud should not feel like anything. Normally, I should not even care about the NXT Championship match. Normally, I should be trying to hit the A button and try to go to the fast forward symbol and get to the main event, but... I sat there and I watched the match. The video package felt like big time. It got me excited to see the match. WWE always does a good job with the video packages. But the match itself between Rude and Itami was really good. I was surprised how good this match was going to be. Much better than a lot of Rude and Shinsuke matches. Like, just being honest here, Bobby Rude's doing a good job making me feel like these matches that I should not care about. He makes me care about them. And that's what I want for my world champion. I can't say how many times I've watched like a WWE title match with like Lesnar. And you know, there's matches, yes, that I'll definitely care about with Lesnar. And if he's facing like a Reigns, maybe a Care Bear because I want to see him squash Care Bear or a big time name. But if I'm seeing Lesnar and Rollins, I'm not invested. I'm not interested. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, cool. Lesnar, Rollins, whatever. Sometimes even with the WWE Championship, when Cena was champion, there'd be matches that were filler or throwaway matches for him, and I wouldn't care. Yeah, sure, it's Cena, but I know he's going to win. But it's good to know, even though if you know someone's going to win, that they carry themselves and they make the match feel like it, they can lose. Look at AJ Styles' as WWE title reign. That's why I didn't think AJ Styles' as WWE title reign was really bad, because he did the best what he could do. With Dean Ambrose and James Ellsworth. I mean, let's be real here. It wasn't like AJ was working with like the cream of the crop on SmackDown Live at that time. He was doing the best of what he can. And that's what I feel like Bobby Roode's doing. He doesn't really have the greatest main event around him. You know, Hideo Tommy has been a guy who's been consistently injured throughout his career with the WWE. And he did great with him. Like I said, it's not the match of the night. It's not a match of the year contender. But it was a really good match. And I liked it. Bobby Roode retains. Right guy goes over. Well, let's talk about this main event. And holy shit. <laughs> Kalisto and, Gar uh, and Care Bear. Your dumpster match was my match of the year. But that got pushed to his side. That's more of a joking match of the year. Kalisto's still the GOAT people on this channel, by the way. Do not forget that. Lucha Lucha. If you guys think Kalisto's not the GOAT, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But that's for another time if you actually watch my streams. It's time to talk about the main event between DIY and the Authors of Pain. First of all, was that really the best video package you could do, WWE? Like, I don't know if you guys saw the DIY and the uh, Revival video package. That was an epic video package. I was expecting some epic video package for this. This, this felt like a make card video package. In fact... DIY and Authors of Pain's entrances felt like make car. Like, it's like they were surprised they were in the main event. Like, I don't know. I was expecting, like, cooler entrances. Like, I was expecting, uh, Gargano and Champa to go underneath the ladder to show that they're not afraid of bad luck. Do it yourself or something. I don't know. But I was just expecting that. But uh, when I was watching this match, I was just, I kind of knew DIY wasn't going to win. But. The scene was about this match that I haven't felt in quite some time with the wrestling match was that I actually hated the heels for what they were doing in the match and loving and admiring the baby faces. And you know, DIY, I, I don't think I've made it public on here on YouTube or if I made it clear, I do like both of these guys. I like DIY. Johnny Gargano, when I say he's a future NXT champ, I'm not saying that to joke or troll. Like, I think he's a future NXT champ. Now, do I want him as WWE champ or US champ? Nah, that's not going to do far there. But for what he is for NXT, he's perfect. Tommaso Ciampa is good. And this tag team 
every time when I watch their matches, it's not just because they're good in the ring and they bring on great five-star matches. Like that, That's not what I like them. What I like about them is that it's hard to explain, but I feel inspired. I admire when I watch them in a way, and I know a lot of people are now going to look at this and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's just wrestling. But the thing is, you get emotional sometimes watching pro wrestling. If you don't really get emotional watching it, that's your business. But for me personally, I do. And like sometimes with their matches, especially like their match with the uh, Revival at uh, the TakeOver Brooklyn. I got emotional when they won the tag titles. I was happy when they won the tag titles because watching their journey to get to those tag titles was fun. And when they wrestled their matches, their facial expressions, their movements, the way they interact with each other as friends and as teammates, it gets me emotional. I want to see these guys win. And then here you have the authors of pain, while DIY is being all bromance and freaking like nice and having their little bromance there. The authors of pain are dicks. <laughs> They're just beating people up. They don't, they don't care and shit like that. Like, I like that. You made me hate these guys, man. And I really like that the authors of pain are just like these the machines that won't go down. They can't be destroyed. They're just here to just kill and k spread violence. It's awesome. I like these guys. But I hated them in this match. And it's not because they're big, clunky dudes and they can't wrestle. They don't have the work. Like, first of all, I give credit to Akam, a a Akam, Razor, whatever the fuck Akam's name is. I give credit to these guys. Because most big guys don't like taking bumps at all. It sucks for them. They don't like it. The fact that they took as much bumps as they did in this match... Minus Acom during the latter spot where he was trying to roll away a little bit early. <laughs> when uh, Gargano jumped from the top of the ladder, Acom's like, I'm going to roll my ass out of the way. <laughs> but i got to give props to these guys for the bumps that they took. Especially Razor. Now Acom, he may not want to take those bumps, but Razor, he had no problem going, going through two ladders. You gotta get props to Razor on that, man. Like, A comes fat ass was like, I have no problem holding the ladder. Razor, you climb. <laughs> I love A come, man. I, A comes, a, a, a comes one of the chests all over face. If you can be that fucking lazy and still, still freaking find a way into my heart, you, you deserve it, A come. <laughs> you didn't want to climb the, like, I love the spot in the beginning of the match when the officer painter finally climbed the ladder. A comes like, you go. And then Razor is looking around like, the fuck? I thought you were supposed to climb over there. I don't have this climb. <laughs> fucking A come, dude. Fucking legend. I don't want to take any fucking bumps. Like, <laughs> through the fucking ladder. But Ray, Ray's our fat ass is like, yeah, I'll go through the fucking ladder. <laughs> oh, no, dude. But but straight up, though, minus laughing at A come. And he did great in this match. I'm just saying it's pretty funny. But they were good. And, and, and I know people weren't happy when, you know, they won. But that's what you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel upset when heels win. And it's not for stupid reasons like like how I don't like Finn Balor because he's goofy and I don't really think he's the main eventer in the WWE. It's more of like the way that the match is built, man. Because you remember that spot, dog, where Acom ladders Gargano in the face. And then Ciampa, he's not even worried about the belt. He's worried about his friend. Holy shit. What a novel concept. Friendship and crap, man. Oh, the characters, the story of this match was just awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome shit. I was emotional. When, when John Gargan got hit with the face with the ladder, and Ciampa was, like, checking on him, not even going for the belts, dude. I was just, I, 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 I was tearing up a bit. I was like, oh, man, I would do the same thing for my bro. And then Acom did a great job just, like, looking at Gargano and booting him in the goddamn face, like, just good stuff in this match, man. And then the ending of the match was just great. And then, like I said, I hope the Chicago fans were booing because of the great heel work the authors of painting this match did and not booing because of big buff guys. I hope people are not hating on the authors of pain because they're just too big. Like, look, are they goofy, the authors of pain? A little bit, especially Acom because he doesn't want to take bumps. And then Razor wants to do everything. <laughs> they are kind of goofy. Do I hate them? I know a lot of people probably think they're up the alley of stuff that I hate. No, because unlike Care Bear and Garbage Man, they know their role, they do their role correctly, and they don't try to step out of their role. 
That's why I like Doctor's opinion. That's why they don't get it. Aiko may get some jokes out his way because the fat ass doesn't want to do any bumps that are, will hurt his body. <laughs> and Razor may... <laughs> I just can't believe Razor went through two lives. Like, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> funny to me, I don't know why, but it was just like a very good emotional ending, dude, and then like, you know, this is where I hate that I, that I was watching this on replay, because I checked the time left on the event, and the event, the match ended at 2 minutes and 17 seconds, and then the actual event ends at 2 hours and 24 sec minutes, and I was like, oh, something's happening at the end? I'll have to wait and see. So, afterwards, DIY doing their usual hug, bro. Like, I love you, bro. Let me go and touch your head, bro. You know, like that type of shit. They were just doing that emotional stuff. And I, I felt bad. I was like, dude, I really wanted them to win. Well, they didn't. But it's a great match. The fans are giving their respect. And then, afterwards, I thought maybe the last, like, four minutes was going to be some pre-show crap or, or something because... Literally, Gargano and Chapo got onto the ramp, and, and the little graphic pops up of, like, NXT TakeOver Chicago. I was like, whoa, what the? Oh, my God, th this event's over. Oh, wow. And then Chapo's like, hey, man, I love you. And then, boom, just throws Gargano, and I got all teared up. I was like, oh, why? 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 When fucking Gargano was getting his ass kicked, and they got by the announce table, and then Gargano was like laying by Champa, and he was grabbing the. Oh, I was I was breaking up a little bit. I was. I'm not gonna lie. I had, I had forced these tears were coming down my eyes. Like I wasn't like, <laughs> but I was like definitely like watching this and then seeing Gargano. And he's like trying to touch his buddy. He, he's like trying to say, "Dude, what's going on?" Like he's all disoriented and stuff, and then Champa's just petting him and then throws him on the announce. Oh. And he got some good heel heat, and Ciampa's turning heel, and it's for the best. Because this is going to lead to Johnny Gargano being our NXT champion and dethroning Bobby Roode. Oh, you think it's going to be the chosen one, Drew McIntyre? Well, what's that metronome I hear? It's Johnny Wrestling coming near, and you're not going to touch the title, Drew. Out of time. So say goodbye. Go back to Anthem Impact. Because my boy Johnny Wrestling, he is the next NXT champion, and you better believe that shit. The Gargano and Ciampa feud is good. What this takeover did for me is made me want to watch NXT on a week to week basis. Not review. Shut <laughs> You're not getting NXT reviews on this channel. Hell nah. But I will be watching NXT on a week-to-week -week basis for multiple reasons. Bobby Roode is a champion that I can respect in pro wrestling, just like I watch Impact on a week-to-week -week basis. And Bobby Lashley's champion because I respect him. Bobby Roode has shown to me that he's a champion that I should care about and I'm going to watch. I am interested to see what they do more with Asuka, even though the women's division's trash. At least Asuka may become an interesting character, and plus Asuka promos are pretty funny to watch. A Kane and Razor. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see what antics these two idiots are gonna do. I'm, a Kane won't take bumps. Razor jumping off ladders. <laughs> How can you not love these two guys? I thought the pain are great. <laughs> gonna watch them. Gargano and Champa. Pete Dunne. Tyler Bate. Definitely not Roderick Strong though. Fuck Roddy Strong. But the thing was that I can say about this takeover, it made me want to watch NXT on a weekly basis. Kind of like the takeover where Samoa Joe debuted and it got me amped up because I wanted to see what Joe did with Kevin Owens and then WWE kind of ruined it. I hope WWE doesn't ruin with what they have. Because yes, NXT may not be as strong as it once was. It may not be as popular as it once was with the hardcore fans and it may not have the names it once had. But I felt like what, what this TakeOver did, it sparked some a little bit more interest in TakeOver that maybe fans didn't have before in NXT. Maybe they do want to watch it on a week-to-week -week basis. Maybe they do want to check out to see what they can, you know, venture into. I know I do now. 
like I said, I'm not gonna review it. Don't don't expect those on those channels. Right, you go to like other YouTubers that want to waste time reviewing NXT. There's no point in me reviewing this shit. I just want to watch it and see if it's worth my time. But really, to be honest here, this show made me want to watch NXT on a week-to-week -week basis. This show was great. I thoroughly enjoyed this show. I recommend this show to everyone. It's one of my favorite shows that I have seen in professional wrestling in quite some time. This is not me making a joke trying to be funny, trying to go with the cool crowd. This is how I truly feel about this show. I honestly have not seen a wrestling show to have done this. Like I said, since Money in the Bank 2011, I have not truly really enjoyed a wrestling show like I did with this one. And yeah, this show wasn't perfect, but neither was Money in the Bank 2011. You remember the shit that we got on that fucking card? Like we got the women's the Divas match that was a waste of time with Kelly Kelly and shit. Mark Henry and Big Show. Minus Mark Henry doing a drop kick. What else happened in that match? Christian won a world title by being kicked in the fucking balls. I mean, yeah, Money Bank wasn't a perfect show match-wise throughout the whole thing, but it was still a great show. Just like this show was a great show. Yeah, everything wasn't perfect. I'm not asking for perfect shows. I'm asking for shows that are enjoyable. And maybe this may be the theme because wrestling has been so shitty for me, at least as of late, where it's just like, oh, the, there hasn't been anything really positive. Like, when's the last time I positively reviewed a show? I I think maybe Backlash of AJ Styles winning the title? And even then, I didn't say that show was great. I just said that show was good? To some extent? I can't remember which pay-per-view AJ won the title. I think it was Backlash or Unforgiven, one of those two SmackDown exclusive pay-per-views, or SmackDown Live, I should say. But yeah, I didn't even like give that like a full show like, oh, I love this whole show. I just love that one moment. I just love this whole show. Now that was really good. Anyways, I rambled on enough. I got to go to sleep. What did you guys think of NXT TakeOver Chicago? Leave it in the comment section down below. And I'll try to reply to your comments as best as I can and stuff like that. If you guys like this review, give this video a big old thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter at ChaseLover68. I always do live streams on this channel. I mostly do live streams, but... Sometimes I like to do the old school video format where I just sit and talk um, into the camera and, you know, just do my shit. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And remember guys, just like Brock Lesnar, sometimes you don't have to give a shit. And finally, fuck Finn Balor. Have a good one guys. Peace.